All right. Uh, any other questions on this from me, or should we give someone up, uh, else a chance to talk about uh, signing stuff up here? So uh, this is very uh, an early warning, right? This is heavy prototype stuff. Uh, the the goal that we're trying to solve is establish a BPF security domain, and we want to say that only executables within that domain, right? These are like the executables I trust to run the BPF syscall should be allowed to like load BPF pro uh, programs. Now this is a in a simpler concept way, this is a mandatory access a Mac policy using BPF, BPF LSM. And the, the, the use case I'm choosing for this is that just allow only BPF trace to load BPF programs. Uh, the implementation of the Mac policy is fairly simple, right? You set a extended attribute on BPF trace saying security domain BPF, which tells the whole LSM framework that Okay, this I, I trust this to load the BPF uh, 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 like uh, BPF uh, execute BPF syscalls. Uh, we need a new helper for this. This helper is called BPF get exciter. Like we need it in the BPF program to get this get the value of these uh, this domain. Uh, and then we use light skeletons and we implement some LSM hooks with the light skeleton there. So we have the first hook that is BPRM committed creds for it's just a fancy name for a process is executed, right? Uh, in this hook, we get the ex exciter from the executable, right? And store this information about the exciter in the task blob. And task blob, again, is like, in for BPF folks, task local storage. The next LSM hook we implement is task alloc, which is when this task forks, you want this capability to the, for example, if BPF trace decides that I'm going to run the BPF syscall in child process, then you want this child process to have capabilities as well. Uh, so you transfer these, these sort of security state into the child task. You may choose to do that. You may choose not to do that. It, that's the beauty of the LSM you implemented in BPF. Uh, BPF prog syscall, so you essentially do what we want to do. You deny BPF syscalls from non-BPF domain uh, processes tasks. And then you also implement, like, deny any attempt to like, write, set new extended attributes. And you could create a new domain, right? Like a trusted executable or something that is allowed to create like a, a set exciters. For, but for simplicity, you can just disable it and you can set this exciter in a trusted environment where you're creating this image. Uh, so I'm gonna show you the demo now and then we can discuss some of the deficiencies of L-scale that we should probably fix uh, on, on this, uh, in this area. I hope my, yeah, so, oops. I'll just show you the code here quickly as well. The code is fairly simple. So this is, a, uh, let me just zoom in a bit. So this is the task. I'll, uh, I'll start with the uh, BPRM committed creds hook. It is a sleepable hook because this get exciter function actually is requires, it can sleep, but that's not too bad. So you get the extended attribute. You, this security exciter name is just security.domain here. Uh, you do a task storage get, right? And then you, uh, you I mean, like, oh, so yeah, this is wrong. Uh, and the, uh, <laughs> then uh, we should edit it in the YouTube video. Uh, so the BP, then you compare whether the value is like uh, uh, for like BPF exciter domain, you can set like a the storage domain exciter security. You can set like, there is, I mean, there is some improvements you can make here. You can create a bitmap and then you can, the domain can be like a composition of these multiple domains. But I, I keep it simple and I just say you can just be in one domain. So you can either be an exciter setter or you can either be like a BPF program executor, right? Uh, then the BPF program LSM hook is fairly simple. It just reads the blob and then uh, it can like, uh, it denies the BPF syscalls for stuff that is not in their domain. And the inode set exciter is very similar. It denies for like something that is not in the exciter domain. Uh, task alloc is also the thing we talked about, right? The new task that is currently being formed and the current task that is forming the new task, the, there is a security transfer state that is happening here. So let's see if this really works. Uh, I'll keep a quick question. So this security dot prefix, how relevant is that? 
it the, I, I tried setting the something without arbitrary extended attributes it wasn't allow it wasn't allowing me to set that i wouldn't i don't care about the security dot prefix but it's just that it wasn't working about without that prefix there are there are certain ex, ex, and this is I, I i claim like less knowledge here right extended attributes can only be set of certain types and there is like a domain in the beginning and this is a security domain we could use we could create a new domain that is called bpf right and then uh, but this will need some kernel changes i didn't want to do any kernel changes for this yet so uh, i used the security.bpf domain and it it just worked uh, security dot and you can have whatever after that uh, so let's go to the demo so uh, this is my vm uh, let's search the exciter. Let's see what the exciter is. And as I claim, there is a exciter that says here. Let's also check like the test progs program, which doesn't have the exciter. Uh, oops. Yeah, it doesn't have any exciter. So what we do is we say uh, control R BPF trace. So this test probes obviously doesn't work because uh, yeah, me, me trying to s sort of allow test probes to run by setting this, this doesn't work. Uh, I can do BPF trace. And this actually works. So it says this, right? I can try doing test probes again. And it's denied. So simple policy using exciter stuff. I think there is a lot of like, uh, uh, if you talk to some security folks uh, on on my side or like even in the LSS, they're going to punch a, a poke, like they're going to poke a bunch of holes. Like you need to do extra LSM checks to this. But I think we can construct a fairly comprehensive policy using just exciters and BPF LSM hooks here. That's all. Brendan, does that answer some of the questions around BPF trace like things? Uh, could we use this to store the uh, aforementioned uh, signature required for the program? Not a bad idea. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Like if you look at like libpf tools, for example, you can have like five different programs, but like at any given kernel, you will start like two or three of them because like other are like alternatives for for like older kernels, so like stuff like that. So BPF, it's like I keep talking about BPF application. That's a collection of programs and and maps, obviously, but it's never a single program. Like well, not never, but like very often, it's not a single program. So. So I think there's one thing I missed sort of discussing about we should discuss is the 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 whole L light skeleton stuff is, is pretty awesome. Like it allows you to create this kernel module that is loadable. But there are a few things that are missing here. The the code needs to be checked in. So I did modify iterators.bpf.c to have this code written. So we probably need some sort of a delegation file in the kernel that could we could point to other sources and then just say like Look, this is where my my light skeleton is file is located. This is the kernel module file, and this is the the stuff. It should generate the right bits in the kernel so that you, all the preload calls can be called from from the kernel. And then, like you don't have to. I ideally one should not be required to check in the source code with the kernel here. So that's one improvement that I was sort of discussing yesterday, and probably we should think of here uh, for the light skeleton stuff. There were other couple of minor niggles which I like. Uh, I can talk about. There was a small bug in the LSM skeleton for BPF tool, where the FD that is allocated is it doesn't uh, raw trace point open for like LSM programs. It does it for only trace tracing programs. Just small stuff. Uh, and then there is a there is a bug here. Like because I preloaded the module, uh, it doesn't really like populate in sysfs. Uh, so this is something we should fix as well. Yeah, so like even though the file should exist, I think if I do a remount of the sysfs, it should like uh, sys, uh, bpffs, it should show up. On some of my remounts, I got a null pointer exception here. So I would like, yeah. Uh, mount minus t bpf. And I think bpf. Yep. 
Yeah, it doesn't show up even now for some reason. So there is some race going on where the... Dash A? No, it, no, I, I don't. It's not with a dot. The file I, I named the file. It's actually not with a oh, dot. Okay. So you want to say new or the fi I, I create files. There are there are these pre-populated like in in the in the code. You can see in the. Uh, yeah. So what kind of mechanism do you think will be useful? Like passing something on the command line, boot command line to preload the set of programs, or what do you have in mind? Probably like a manifest file of some sort, right? Like which contains pointers to like the uh, 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 sort of your this preload kern type thing, which provides the preload operations, and then a set of BPF programs, or like light skeletons it loads. I. But like, you still need to, do you want to recompile the kernel or not? So it, if I if I recompile the kernel, of course, yeah, it can be in the in the source code, right? Like I, I I I'm happy to recompile the kernel. I just don't want to check it in the kernel source tree. I want to point it to like these locations, it, it, like there is these look at these look like kernel patches to me, and I they, they are actually not, right? There but is, you can compile a kernel module outside of the kernel tree, right? Easily, so same thing. I'm not sure. Like you, the kernel modules can be compiled. Anyway, right? They don't need to be part of the kernel to be. So just this so, is your kernel module. This, just keep it somewhere else. So if you if I this is when I'm building it with equal to m, right? I also wo I also want the capability to build it with like the like as as built into the kernel tree, so that I can do an early boot. In this case, this whole framework sort of assumes that this is just located in the kernel tree itself. Well, for built-in, yes. For built-in, for the module to become yeah. dash equal y and to be built in and during the early boot before being in it before anything well it has to be compiled with the kernel as part of the kernel tree yes so it, I, you're I, saying I, change that so to have built in kernel modules that are outside of the this just just like directory wise located outside so yeah. essentially k built extension exactly like something that allows the engineers or who, who want to use this functionality but they don't, they don't want to mess with the kernel source tree more than just the configuration option that allows them to specify where the stuff is located, right? It's, it's, it's mostly a development thing. It's not a, it's not a functionality. I think the functionality thing was one, the missing thing in BPF tool, and the other one was... Uh, is there a precedent you... No. Is there a precedent in kernel where you embed something in the kernel that's not checked into the, into the kernel repository? Because that's what you try Device to do. Device tree? What? Device tree stuff? Like... I don't know, like I vaguely recollect some of these things, but yeah, I, I, I don't know the precedent. I'll have to do some digging. <laughs> Can you elaborate on the earlier comments? So you, you were saying that the X address stuff may not be enough like to implement this safely or? I, or like I, I think it is good enough like for okay. me, but I want to run this by a few like security folks and like try to poke holes in this, right? It's okay. an LSM uh, and it claims to give strong security properties. It shouldn't have any bugs in that. Yeah, OK. Please send the patch for gets, gets a tatter. Yes. Right, you, since you have a trade, so just yeah, I have finally polish got, it and send it. Yeah, I have, uh, I have the, the, the best part. This is good advice, because if, you, if I don't send it for three more months, the tree will move forward, and then I will spend three more hours fixing this. So yes, I will send this patch before I leave this place. <laughs> And your sample code is a self-test. <laughs> of course, yes. <laughs> action With item, cl clear, clear action items for me. <laughs> I think we. I. I. I've, I've finished. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>